I think the Rory go faster without the roof. Jim! What is cracking, everybody? You're back with Mr. Burger. And if you're one of my usual viewers or subscribers, you're probably wondering, where the hell have I been? Well, I'll tell you. Tonight, you're in luck, because I'm going to talk a little bit about my vacation. And in fact, I want to make a video about it at some point, but we'll see if I can get around to that in the future. Basically, my dad decided to move from Bangkok, Thailand, down to Arizona. So... We hopped into my girlfriend's car, drove down to San Francisco Bay Area, got a big SUV, then the four of us and my dad's wife's cat and her dog all hopped into the SUV and drove all the way down to Las Vegas for a night. And we didn't really do anything there, we just kind of crashed there for a night. And then we drove down to Arizona. And it was a long road trip, but it was a lot of fun. And I was out for about a week and a half or so, and you know, it was pretty cool. Got to catch up with my dad, got to help him move, all that good stuff. Got a new pair of skate shoes. <laughs> it was great. So, anyway, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a future video if I get a chance to make that, but that's basically why I've been MIA for a little while. So, let's get to tonight's video. I thought it'd be fun to just kind of do a little bit of a Clan Wars, you know, attack video for both of the days. So I incorporate, or I'm going to incorporate uh, the attacks from day one and day two on both of my accounts into this video and talk a little bit about strategies and my preferences. So first of all, you'll notice that this is a draft battle. And draft is definitely my favorite mode. You've probably heard me mention this before in previous videos. It's a lot of fun, I really enjoy it. It allows you to have a different deck every game. It completely changes the meta throws it way out of proportion you know into another universe because you have no idea what you're gonna get and what your opponent's gonna give you and it brings a whole new element of strategy into the game because you get to build half of your deck sometimes you have to choose whether you want to have a better card or whether you want your opponent to have a worse card or you know there's a lot of different options that you can have and I have a pretty good record as far as draft challenges go I think it's draft challenges are the ones that I've allowed myself, or that I've gotten all the way to 12 wins in, uh, in most cases, and challenges. I think I've gotten like 11 wins in a classic challenge once, but that was about it. But in draft challenges, I've definitely gotten 12 wins. Uh, I generally win a good amount of draft challenges in the clan wars, so I really enjoy them. So in this deck, you'll notice that I actually ended up picking or having the Royal Giant. I can't remember if I picked it. I don't think I did. I imagine that I got it. Now, that's not something that you would normally see somebody want to do is have a royal, giant, a royal Giant at tournament level standard because as you probably know cards like the Royal Giant and the E-Barbs are extremely powerful when they're over leveled and when you're at tournament standard level there's absolutely no possibility for them to be over leveled because everything's at an equal, equal playing field but you'll see here that the Royal Giant Royal Giant, jeez I keep stuttering about his name <laughs> the Royal Giant pulls through at the end here. So I gotta defend hard here. I use my fireball there to defend, take out the support rather than to chip away at the tower. And I use the graveyard defensively, which is actually a really powerful play against things like P.E.K.K.A.s, giant skeletons, uh, golems, you know, big beefy units like that, using the graveyard and defense, because it kind of turns it into a bit of a skeleton army. And against like P.E.K.K.A.s and giant skeletons, since they spawn in all these different spots, then it distracts them even more. And you can see that the Royal Giant pulled through with the fireball and finished off the match for me right there. Now another one of my favorite modes for Clan Wars is the Sudden Death mode. And you'll see that's why I incorporated this into the thumbnail. Well, what I did here in the Sudden Death mode is I kind of made like a balloon cycle deck and I just used cards that I have highest leveled because you know, that's generally what's most powerful on ladder, and in this case, clan wars, because they use your current card levels unless you're doing a draft challenge. That's the only one that's at tournament standard level. So I got the mini tank with the knight, I got the balloon, I got freeze and clone in there, I got fireball to finish it up, and you can see that that was a bad clone there. It didn't work out too well. And this is kind of like a one and done deck. You gotta like freeze and clone them and catch them off guard with your balloon and just annihilate their tower. 
So I kind of panicked here when I saw that I didn't get him on that first push and I had to play defense. And you can see the knight, the fireball, and the lumberjack do a pretty solid job of playing defense. And then I'm able to use the mega minion there, get the rage benefit from the previous lumberjack, get another lumberjack down there, and it's no problem. I'm taking care of that giant. I play a pretty solid defense here, and you can see once I've got that defense played, I got two units. Now it looks like he's got more elixir than me, but I've got three units on the field now. That's a lot of elixir. I've got the balloon going in, and the benefit of the lumberjack is when he dies, it drops a little rage effect. You can see that I freeze him here, the balloon gets the hit. I'm going to clone. The second clone gets the hit. The balloon gets a second hit off, and that completely finishes the job. Now this is going to be another draft challenge draft battle so let's see what I do I think I choose the princess yep that's the correct answer because I like princess I think about this one for a while I decided to go with the inferno tower because I feel like there's a good chance he'll have something heavy in there and what do you know I decided to choose goblin barrel and give him the giant because that gives me something to counter with my inferno tower that gives him a major win condition that he's probably gonna rely on a lot and it gives me a direct solid heavy counter to that win condition so let's see what we do for an opening move here. Oh boy, I got the bomber. Useless bomber. No, I'm just kidding. Bomber actually has really solid DPS. Again, it's one of those cards that can be decent if he's over leveled. He's just really squishy. He dies really easily. So what do I do here? I use the bomber. I use him a little bit late, but look at that. He one-shots the goblins. So that's pretty solid. He one-shots the spear goblins, obviously. If he's going to one-shot the goblins, he'll one-shot the spears as well. Now I use the mega minion. Mega minion is a mini tank. Now that's a tongue twister. And I actually get a really solid amount of damage there with the Mega Minion comboed with the Goblin Barrel. He uses that Dark Goblin on defense, and he sends in the Giant on offense here. And I accidentally placed the Wizard and the Inferno Tower right on top of each other, allowing them to be susceptible to a lot of his support units hitting them both at the same time or right after one another. So he actually does a really solid amount of damage with that Dark Goblin comboed with the Giant tanking in front of it. And takes out like a chunk of my tower's health, brings it down to 1100. And he's sending in the goblin gang, obviously mirrored there because it's higher level, and I use the bomber to defend against it. You can see the bomber, if he has something tanking for it, in this case the tower, he actually does a really good chunk of damage. So now I send in the goblin barrel, and that allows the bomber to get a swing off on the tower, and you can see when he hits the tower, he does a lot of damage there. I like using the princess in the opposite lane, because it allows her to provide support from across the map. It's something that I started doing more and more recently that I didn't think about before, and it's proven to be very beneficial because it allows her to stay alive for a really long time, which is kind of the point of having a princess. You can see the Mega Minion is a really solid defensive unit here. Completely shuts down that Executioner. And then I got the Wizard here on defense rather than the Bomber. I could have used either, but I used the Wizard this time. Wizard definitely provides more of an offensive threat, but of course he costs a lot more. So, you know, you know, pick and choose. Which one do you want? Do you want the cheaper cost card, or do you want the more powerful card? Alright, I got the Hunter Cycle in the back. I've got a lot of support cards in this particular deck. So, let's see how it goes. He's running in there. Now, he doesn't do too much damage from afar, remember? And again, you can see that I use the Princess in the opposite lane. I got the Infern Tower down already, so that's going to lock onto the Giant there. He doesn't provide any support, but dude, look at how much damage that Hunter does to it. I didn't even need that Inferno Tower. The Hunter just blew that guy up. Hunter has really solid damage. At point blank range, he absolutely blows up tanks. So he wrecks giants and golems. And if he's got a distraction for the P.E.K.K.A., he can do a good amount of damage to the P.E.K.K.A. too. And of course, you know, you just place him on top of support units, he'll basically one-shot a musketeer and a wizard and so on and so forth. See how quickly he makes work of that executioner there. Now at this point, I just want to kind of chip away at the right tower. I'm a little bit scared because he has my let my right tower down pretty low but my princess is allowed to stay alive for a long time and I see that he's really low he tries to lighten me but I'm able to fireball him and finish up the job beforehand so that's another draft challenge win now this is gonna be another preparation day battle that I actually did on this account and what I'm running here is this interesting giant graveyard it's kinda like a splash yard beatdown kinda of deck but I've got both the dart goblin and the princess in there so the idea being there's a very slight hint of log bait. If he logs, or in this case fireballs one, I can use the other. And he accidentally fireballs my main tower there, so that pulling in of that hog there was kind of not necessary. I go for an offensive push here, and this is a double elixir, the double elixir event for the clan wars. And you can see the giant left alone, pretty overleveled on this account. 
comboed with the support of the Dark Goblin and the Baby Dragon. I mean, that just does a ton of damage right there. That's like over half of his tower's health. I didn't even need to use that graveyard. So he knows that my main tower has been activated, so he fireballs at two, trying to hit the princess, but he completely whiffs the princess. So that's too bad on his part. All right, I got the giant going in again. He does have that Inferno Dragon, but you see that I zapped the Goblin Gang, the bats, and the Inferno Dragon. So this player needs to learn a thing or two about placement, but hey, that's okay. I definitely needed to learn a thing or two about placement when I was, you know, uh, earlier on in my career in Clash Royale, and trust me, there's a lot of things I still have to learn at this point. So, anyway, I use the giant on defense here, and you can see again he places the Goblin Gang and the Bats in the same spot, so my princess just cleaves through them, makes quick work of them. Now here we got the giant rolling on, on offense, but he's almost dead. We see that the opponent has a giant skeleton, and it's interesting to see him playing a barbarian barrel. That's not something that you see too often. He probably could have hit my dark goblin as well with that fireball, but he missed it, unfortunately. Alright, here I use the giant aggressively on offense. I finally get out that graveyard, and I got the baby dragon and the zap and the dark goblin to finish off that inferno dragon in the back there. I got the giant doing work to the tower, some skeletons are still alive, the dark goblin is in the back chipping away, I got poison, wreaking havoc on the tower, and I don't quite finish it off. I use another giant aggressively, I don't know if that was the best play, maybe I should have tried to kind of get a bit of a beat down going, a big push going, a snowball going, but I figure he's so low I could probably just finish him off with chip damage, maybe even like the zap and the poison, so does that work out? Well let's see. I use the poison, and I know that I can poison cycle him and use the zap spell to kind of chip away at the tower. That allows him to take my right tower here, but I'm okay with that because I know that I'm so close to three crowning him. I'm just going to play slight defense here. I don't have to answer that Inferno Dragon because both of my towers are attacking him. I use the uh, giant on offense just kind of to apply pressure so that he doesn't have a chance to do anything. And then the only thing that I need to do anymore at this point is use the poison and a zap just to kind of make sure that it finishes it off even quicker. And that's the end of that match. And now for my final battles on the second day of this war. So on this particular account, what I was kind of going for is, I believe, like a big beatdown kind of deck. I got the Elixir Pump there, and I got the Minion Horde, and that kind of gives it an element of Fireball or Spell Bait. And I see the Goblin Barrel coming in. And as you advance more, you're kind of able to see that they're not sending the Goblin Barrel always directly at the tower. In that case, I was able to see that he was sending it at the Elixir Pump. And on top of that, that's probably just you know the logical conclusion. He's going to try to take out the Elixir Pump. So I use the Archers on defense, and they were able to shut it down pretty well. And I got the Golem, and I got the Sparky in there. So I got this massive beatdown push going. So I allow him to kind of get a bit of chip damage on the left tower there. It's not a big deal for me, because I know that I'm going to go for a huge push here on the right and I'm going to try to absolutely decimate that tower over there. So let's see how it goes. Well, I got the golem going down already, and I got a level 2 Sparky rolling in behind him. Now, he does have a giant skeleton, which is kind of bad news for my Sparky, because that giant skeleton's bomb is a ton of damage. But what's even worse news is he's got an Electro Wizard. But I place down the archers, and they just destroy that Electro Wizard on top of the poison. And now Sparky has a chance to charge up and blow up that giant skeleton. The archers get stuck behind her a little bit, but it's not a big deal. And he uses the Dark Goblin there. Unfortunate placement, because it distracts all my units just long enough so that they don't walk right into that giant skeleton's death damage from the bomb that he carries. Sparky gets a shot off onto the main king tower. You can see that I'm able to put an elixir pump in the bottom left there. I decide, okay, even if I have a hold on a bunch of damage done, I should try to pump up. I know that he's going to try to use the miner on the elixir pump, but he actually misses. He goes for the tower there. I wonder if that was intentional. I finally use the minion horde on defense. Make sure to use it once the baby dragon is locked onto the tower and not beforehand, because obviously the baby dragon having splash damage is a very good counter to that minion horde. So if it locks directly onto the minion horde, it's going to shut it down pretty well. Now, what we have next here is the dark goblin running in. He uses the giant skeleton in front, kind of as an aggressive play. I got the Mega Minion going there. Now see how I use the Sparky just in the right lane. Just like one tile into the right lane. So that it distracts the giant skeleton there. And then proceeds over into the right lane to support that golem. I place the archers down to support. I decide to use the Minion Horde aggressively. And I just finish him off with a poison and the golem. And that does the job. 
All right, guys, this is the last one. So what I did here, if I'm not mistaken, is kind of like a mortar deck. So we see that I start with pretty much a bunch of support cards in hand. He has the Royal Giant. I don't like that on this uh, kind of lower. It's, it's not quite tournament standard level, but it's only a level 9 Royal Giant. So yes, it is a mortar deck. I got a bunch of support cards, and I actually decided to play this kind of like the Expo Cycle deck in the sense that we had a Tesla that was pretty high level too in this particular, you know, round of the war deck options. So I used the Tesla, and I decided to use that as kind of like a defensive uh, counterpart to, or not counterpart, but a uh, co-part rather, to the mortar. So I got two structures here. I got the musketeer and the archers for your typical range support. And I make the mistake, you'll see a couple times here, placing the musketeer in the back which allows him to fireball the musketeer and his fireball is one level higher so it one shots the musketeer so that's unfortunate for me so, and, and as I was saying earlier you know we all have problems with placing and that's a prime example of me making a mistake with placing and not learning from it after the first time but I think after the second or third I probably learn about, about it and you know don't make that same mistake and that's the idea you can see that I use the Tesla here on defense to take out the princess I really like the Tesla for a number of reasons Tesla's great for taking out princesses because since it stays underground the princess's advantage is that she can shoot from afar but she can't target it while it's underground it's like invisible to her basically so when she runs close enough the tesla will pop out when it gets within the tesla's range and only then can she target it but it doesn't matter then because it's already within the tesla's range and you can see there i make that same mistake as mentioned earlier so once the princess gets within the tesla's range it pops up and it just pretty much one or two shots her I got the Inferno Dragon there, and that's a great counter to the Royal Giant. It does a good amount of damage to the Wizard there, but it doesn't quite finish it off. I decided to use the Knight kind of on defense just because I was bleeding Elixir there for a second. I got the Archers again. I really do like Archers, as I've mentioned many times before. I decided to let him just kind of have that Goblin Barrel on the right tower. Maybe not the best choice, but it allows me to invest a lot of Elixir here on that Mortar, and supporting that Mortar, you can see that I got the Tesla to defend it, I got the Knight in front of it tanking, and I even got the Musketeer in the back, and you can see, oh no, I placed the Archers right as that Fireball came in, so that was unfortunate for me, but the Knight gets a few hits off on the Tower, the Mortar gets a few hits off on the Tower, I get another Mortar down, the Tesla's staying alive, the Tesla didn't get hit by the Fireball because of the fact that it stays underground, and there's no units within range, so that was awesome, and at this point the Mortar gets another swing off, and I can pretty much just poison or rocket his tower at this point. I don't even need to rocket. I don't think I even touched the rocket this game. He probably doesn't even know that I have it. So I just poison his tower, and that pretty much finishes off the job. So I absolutely love the war feature. There's a lot of mixed reactions to it. A lot of people dislike it. A lot of people want the clan chest back. But I'm pretty fond of it so far. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And have a good night. I think the Rory go faster without the roof. Chill.